When I was a deacon at the seminary at Oscott in Birmingham, the whole college went on pilgrimage to ours, to the shrine of today's saint, Saint Jean Baptiste Marie Vianney, the curé of ours, the patron saint of parish priests. It was from that time that in my preparation, my immediate preparation to become a priest, it was at that time that I decided to go back to ours every year. And for, for five years I, I did that until I moved to Manchester. It brought for me, a, if you like, a clarification of what it was to be a priest. Certainly preparing for ordination to the priesthood and in the first years of being a priest and actually every year after that, there are lots of ideas in one's mind, lots of half articulations, lots of puzzles, lots of, of questions, lots of consolations about being a priest. And going to ours, going to the curia of ours, these things seem to coalesce into a form. They seem to stop swirling about and come into some understandable manner of being a priest. I think that's what he, he certainly did that for me and the friends I used to go with. And what he said to us, if you like, what he helped bring together for us, is that a priest is nothing without the Blessed Sacrament. That the whole of the priest's life must be this gazing upon the Lord who's come to us, a filling of the mind with the Lord who comes to us, a receiving of the Lord who comes to us, a feeding with the Lord who, who comes to us. So that everything about the priest is, is, is saturated by the presence of the Lord. And it was funny, I went with three other priests and more or less we all had the same experience. We were saying Mass at the, the shrine where the relics are above the altar one day. And as we elevated, as the host was elevated, the, the saints seemed to gaze at it as we did. You know, he's, he's lying there in his chasse, his head tilted towards his left, and he, he seemed to gaze upon the same Lord that we were gazing upon. And that really was, was the whole of his ministry as a priest. He put into practice, he did what every priest wants to do. And he did it in his way, and he did so in the, the first half of the 19th century. In France, just north of, of Lyons, and he became, from humble beginnings, as really a no-hoper in the seminary with his intellectual formation, to become the patron saint of parish priests. He was born in 1786, I think, on the 8th of May, in a place called Dardilly, just to the northwest of, of Lyon. When he wanted to be a priest, of course, and when he wanted to give his life to God, well, those things were, were next to impossible at that time, because it wasn't long after that, that hell broke loose in France with the French Revolution. 
and our holy religion was something to be despised it was removed from people's lives and so the formative years of of the curia of ours and his first communion for example his first confession would have been made with priests who had to operate underground if you wanted to be loyal to the pope and loyal to the ancient faith you had to disappear as a priest and like in persecutions, creep around to say mass and, and celebrate sacraments secretly. So he came across these priests who were, who were really heroes in his eyes. He was enrolled in the Grand Army of Napoleon, but he ran away. He was a deserter. He hid in a barn, changed his name until I think his brother took his place and then when he did get a seminary he went to 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 Lyon he was thick as two short planks he he couldn't understand a thing he was a farmer's son I, well, I'm a farmer's son too but you know what I mean yeah. but anyway he came to a time of ordination the vicar general said well he says his rosary well and anyway they're really short of priests at the moment. So he was ordained and he was sent as a curate to a very, very good priest. And then after a few years there, he was sent to his own parish in Ars, to the north of, of Lyon. And again, the vicar general said, there isn't much love of God in that village, but you, We'll put it there. And there wasn't much love of God, because since the, the revolution and since the, the coronation of human reason and the human aspiration, the human being reverted to its bestial state quite quickly. He arrived there. He arrived there on a very foggy day. He couldn't find his way. He's, he had a horse and a cart and a, a few bits, sticks of belongings, sticks of furniture. And he came across a little lad, a, a shepherd, and he said, where am I? I'm trying to find ours. I'm the new curé. And he said, if you show me the way to ours, I'll show you the way to heaven. And he did that in his whole ministry. And actually that little boy, when he was a man, was the first parishioner to die after Saint Jean-Marie. So he did show him the way to heaven. He arrived there and he spent the beginning of his time as a sacristy priest. He lived in his church and he restored it and prayed and got the bell working and rang it and a couple of people came to say their prayers and he got it tidied up because he knew that if his church was right then the rest of the parish would be right and then he would set off on his parish rounds he'd go around the farms little hamlets and he'd have a glass of wine with the farmers and talk about the the crops he knew what he was talking about as a, a farmer's son and then he'd come back and continue with the round of his life he was famous for his, his catechism. He would speak to the children, first of all, after the Sunday Mass. But then everybody came to hear him. It's a, it's a tiny little church. It's dedicated to St Sixtus, whose, whose feast is this week, actually. And then his great fame came from his ministry of the reconciliation of sinners, of hearing confessions. And he spent up to 18 hours a day in the confession, in the confessional. People would come with open tickets to go to ours to make the confession. And there he sat, the women's confession in this chapel, and men's confession in the sacristy, I think. And like all these saintly confessors, these saintly directors, it wasn't so much what he knew about you, although quite often he had 
uh, a gift of, of, of clairvoyance about that. But it was like heart speaking to heart, depth calling upon depth. He knew you. He knew you because God knew you and he knew God. It's a remarkable thing that. The more time we spend with the Lord in prayer as priests, the more then we'll understand the secrets of hearts. It's not our work we're allowed to join in. May he pray for us, especially priests. He tried to run away from his parish two or three times. At one time, the river swelled in front of him. He couldn't cross. Another time, the people found him and took his breviary off him. And he wouldn't go anywhere without his breviary and took him back to the confessional. And he went back resignedly and sat down. He knew how hard it was. He knew that he was a sinner. He knew that there is no way that he could be effective in anything he did without spending long time in prayer. He said, you don't need to be like me. You need to be like yourself, but saturated in God. And then God, as we know, will do the work through us for the salvation of souls. So, pray for your priests. Very, pray very hard for them, actually. You know what to do. As they offer you and all that you go through to God and bring God blessings down through their life, their sacramental life, which is themselves, to you as they, as they minister among you. May God's holy angels surround you and wrap you and fold you and love you and all those whom you love both in this world and the next. God bless.